We've been screaming about our water being wrong for 20 months. We proved that there was a widespread lead problem. We've proven over and over that the water's poison, yet we're still getting served up contaminated water, and we are still being billed the highest rates for the lowest quality water, and people are still getting sick. It's unbelievable that this happens in 2016, Great Lakes State. This is PTR, People's Tribune Radio. Let's listen to some people who want to be heard. They want clean water, a safe place to live. The city has always said that there are enough shelter beds for these people, that they don't need to camp out on the streets. I mean, homeless is homeless, okay? We have no other place to go. Homeless is homeless. Enough food. Hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Can't you see I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Yes, I'm really hungry. Any job. Today's program is from the July 2016 People's Tribune newspaper, a monthly published in Chicago, an editorial. Government must guarantee our basic needs. Please listen. Our water has been poisoned. Why? Who is wanting to do this to us? Ask a young schoolgirl at a Chicago meeting. Officials knew the drinking water in her school was contaminated with lead, yet did nothing to prevent the children from drinking it. In an investigative report launched in the wake of the crisis in Flint, Michigan, officials in 33 out of 43 cities across 17 states have reviewed have been cheating when testing the water systems for lead. Where is the government response in defense of the people? Furthermore, corporations have dumped toxic chemicals into water resources while government agencies look the other way, putting those who must use it to bathe and drink at risk for cancer and other deadly diseases. Recently, 100,000 residents in northern Alabama were warned by their water supplier not to drink or cook with tap water because of dangerous madman compounds found in the Tennessee River. And in Detroit, Flint, and Baltimore, water shutoffs to the poorest workers continue while delinquent businesses receive a pass. Water is the new gold for corporations such as Nestle, the world's largest bottling company. Nestle pumps water for free from the Great Lakes Basin, while Flint residents are forced to pay for poisoned water. Nestle was given a $13 million tax break to move its operations to Michigan. And in Freiburg, Maine, the governor granted a subsidiary of Nestle a contract to take over their public water system for profit for up to 45 years. Public control of water and other necessities such as housing, health care, and education is essential to the fight for survival of a section of the working class which has been displaced by automation, and whom the capitalist system and its billionaire owners no longer need for production. However, now, corporate-run government is helping the corporations profit by handing key areas of the economy such as schools, health care, and water systems over to them while taxpayers foot the bill. This is a form of nationalization in the ruler's interest. Meanwhile, workers are demanding that the government help them instead of bailing out the corporations. The battle against corporate solution to a dying economic system and the growing dispossession of millions of workers is being waged by new grassroots organizations. They are demanding that government fix the nation's failing infrastructure, get lead out of the pipes, provide safe, affordable water to all, protect water as a public trust, and make Medicare available for all in response to the poisoning of our children. And they are demanding an end to the spreading corporate dictatorship. The question is, why does anyone have the right to privately own our national resources? 
If the corporations cannot provide our needs, then we must demand that the government will. The demand that the government provides health care, housing, education, water, and guarantees them for the people is nationalization, or government takeover of the corporations in the people's interests. The demands are a bridge to a new society where the abundance produced is distributed to all based on need. After that, what is a society for if not to provide for the well-being of the people so that they may live peacefully together? Contact the People's Tribune at www.peoplestribune.org or call 800-691-6888. The only solution to our problems is a cooperative society where the needs of all the people are met. Send your stories to the People's Tribune. Its pages are open to you. Find out how people are fighting forward with a vision to create a new society. Subscribe to the People's Tribune and order copies to share with others. Donate at peoplestribune.org. We need your support to continue telling the truth.